Hello everyone, my name is Protesilaos, also known as Prot. A couple of days ago I switched back to Ivy as my completion framework for Emacs. I took the time necessary to read the official manual and to do some further research into the functionality of this tool. I then went on to configure things to my liking in order to address some of the issues I had with the out-of-the-box experience. So I feel now I am in a position to share some of that knowledge with you in the hope that it will be useful. So I will switch to my Max window over here. I already have screen key running. What I want to do is to demonstrate some of the hidden or perhaps the less obvious features of Ivy, the features that make uh, the experience of Ivy uh, much better. So let's invoke an Ivy interface. Control HV is the universal help command for uh, variables. You are searching for documentation concerning variables. Now notice where my point is in the window over here. If I press meta and J, it will take the word and point and insert it in the mini buffer. So now I have the word over there and I can go on searching from here. This is quite great. When you are in a uh, mini buffer prompt like this and you have already searched for something, you can uh, uh, lock in this search terms that you already have and use them as a filter. You do that with shift and space. So now the list has been narrowed down to the previous search. So you can search again. Uh, so this is very nice, very convenient way of quickly narrowing down the list of candidates exactly to where you want to go. When you are, of course, in uh, Ivy, if you press the return key, it will just run the command at point uh, and close the mini buffer. But sometimes you want to run the command, but keep the mini buffer open. You do that with control meta and M. So this runs the command, which in this case is to display documentation and keeps the mini buffer open so you can move up and down in the list and uh, continue to work in the mini buffer. So for example, in this case where you are searching for documentation, you might want to read more items on this list. Uh, so you can press control meta and M, then move to the next item and do it again. But if you are doing that kind of task, there is a more efficient way of doing it. Control meta and N or P. Control meta and N will move to the next item and run the command in all in one go. Control meta N moves and runs. Meta N moves and runs. And then in the opposite direction, control meta P uh, and control meta N, it's the same thing uh, for up and down. So this is great, a very convenient feature indeed. When you are over an item like this one, uh, or any item in Ivy actually, you can yank it to the kill ring with meta O and then the letter W. So now that it has been yanked, you can go, sorry, it has been copied to the kill ring. You can now yank it in uh, the buffer that you are in. This is quite convenient. Or if you want, you can uh, do, for example, you have this item over here and you want to insert it directly in the buffer, meta O and the letter I will just insert it directly in the buffer. So this is very convenient, especially when you have uh, these long names and you want to reference them somewhere, you don't want to type the whole thing out, that will take uh, an entire week. Uh, so let's uh, close this. Uh, when you are in a list uh, like this, of course, you can move uh, up and down in the list, uh, in the history rather, of your input, of your searches, with meta N and meta P. This is, of course, universal to Emacs. Uh, it works in Ivy as well. So when you are in a list like this, you can produce a buffer out of the items of this list with control C, control O. Control C, control O produces a buffer which runs the major mode Ivy occur. And if you do control H M, you can find the documentation about this major mode and the things you can do with it. Normally what you want to do, of course, everything is configurable, uh, but you can move to the item you are interested in, or you might want to search for it. You can do whatever you want and press the return key to run the action for this item. Again, because this is documentation, it runs the documentation for this uh, item over here. Quite nice indeed. So let's come back over here. Uh, other things you can do. Uh, at this point, I should say that I am using another uh, program called Ivy Pause Frame. I will talk about it in a minute. So now I will invoke Control X, Control F. So this is the command uh, for uh, searching for a file, visiting a file. 
and let's say that I am visiting this file. Uh, what I want to do now is press meta and i to take the current match and insert it to the prompt. And the reason I want to do this is because, for example, I want to have a backup. So you can see how it is easy it is, and you have now a backup of this item. Um, of course, I called it backup, but this is a new file. I just wanted to show you. It's not a copy of that file. Uh, but the principle is exactly that, that you can uh, take a, a common prefix of an item and then use it to produce uh, another file out of it. Uh, another thing, sorry, I mistyped something. Another thing you can do is, for example, I want to, uh, let's say, produce a file called init, and it is, let's say, init l, and it is giving me this much over here. Um, I don't want this, I want to press Control and P to focus on the prompt and not take me to the match over there, because, for example, I want to have something else, extension. So you can do it this way. So this way you will never select the wrong item. So let's close this. So this is uh, great as well. Uh, let's now switch to the MX prompt. MX, as I said, I'm using PostFrame. I will talk about it in a minute. Uh, let's say that you have an item over here. Uh, press meta and O to see the various options that you have. And this is something that I really like what I'm showing now. You can press the letter D to move to the source code right away and to see the um, uh, ELISP definition of this function right on the spot. So if you want to customize something, you can uh, check the source code of the, over here, copy whatever you want and move on and uh, customize things accordingly. So this is quite exquisite. Another thing you can do, of course, if you check this uh, menu over here, is you can search for help uh, from that screen as well. So again, this is very handy uh, and very convenient indeed. Uh, so let's uh, close this. Um, I think this is all with regard to the absolute essentials. Uh, of course, you can uh, configure things uh, to your liking. There are uh, lots of things you can do. For example, whether you want regular expressions, whether you want uh, fuzzy search, uh, what kind of key bindings uh, should be involved. Now I, should, I want to talk a bit about the configurations that I have because I think uh, they contribute to a better experience. Let's start with AMX. AMX is the continuation of a package that you have probably heard called SMEX. And the SMEX um, was originally designed, as far as I can tell, for IDO mode. IDO mode is the built-in equivalent of Ivy. It is like Ivy, but it comes uh, shipped with Emacs by default. But AMX, which is the newer version of uh, SMEX, the continuation of SMEX, is not designed to work just with IDO mode. You can use it for IV as well. And you do that with this uh, variable over here, AMX backend, you just set it to the automatic and it will pick up IDO, uh, sorry, it will pick up IV if you have IV mode running. And this is great because when you run MX, it now has a history of all your um, commands, of everything that you have run, and a scoring system. For, so for example, uh, I usually type MX and then bongo to go to my music player, check my backlog, I have a couple of videos. So if I do MX and press the letter B, bongo will be the first thing on the list because this is exactly what I want. So this is great. If I press M, it will produce MU for E, so my email. If I press E, L feed to go and read RSS. So you can see how useful this is. Uh, it um, solves the problem for me of uh, trying to figure out key bindings for all those specialized functions that I use all the time. Now it's just MXB, for example, and I go to Bongo. Very simple, very easy. And of course you can do MXB uh, and then, for example, control meta M to open this and continue in the mini buffer, right? Uh, as I showed before. So this is one thing. Uh, let's see what else do we have. Uh, what else do we have uh, with regard to this? Uh, of course, uh, you have to uh, check everything that I have here. Lots of commands. Uh, there are lots of uh, council interfaces uh, for searching your recently visited files, for switching to buffers and things of that nature. 
Ah, now that I set buffers, let me show you a nice trick over here. Remember earlier where I showed you the occur thing, what you can do, you can produce a new window out of these. When you are in buffers, I have configured it so that the occur command will take you to I buffer. Control C, control, oh, sorry, let's search for something first. I will show you what I mean. So IV occur. So we have IV occur. I'm just typing it out just uh, for didactic purposes. And now that we have this, we want to press control C, control O, and this produces I buffer, an I buffer interface, we, with all the matching uh, candidates. I buffer, of course, is a separate program. You can do control H, M, uh, to read uh, documentation about it. It's a major mode. So you can know what uh, things to do with it. Uh, many of the key bindings are similar to the directory editor, to Dyard, and I have showed uh, some of these in uh, lots of previous videos of mine. Check my backlog. But basically what I want to show you here is that, of course, you can mark items and operate on them. But uh, when you have not marked any item, if you press the letter T, so toggle, it will toggle the mark. So this means zero marks toggles to all marks. So now you have marked all the items on this list, all those 12 buffers that you searched for with uh, Ivy, and now you can kill these buffers just by pressing the letter D. Of course, I did it very slowly because I am uh, talking and uh, trying to explain things, but you can see how fast uh, this is uh, when you are just uh, switching to things. And then let's say I have, for example, these three over here, I want to do this and then I want to do that. You can see how it is. You close three or however many buffers very quickly. This is great. Uh, I closed some files that I am interested in keeping around, but I have configured it to uh, read from the recent F uh, um, program, the recent F utility, in order to populate the so-called virtual buffers. So these are uh, files that you visited recently, buffers that you had available recently, but you killed them. So you can bring them uh, back up and uh, as if they were open, you can bring them that up uh, by switching buffers. By the way, the command here I have super and B is over there is the equivalent of control X and B. Just I prefer uh, super and B. Uh, let's go to this one over here again. Uh, let's see what else do we have. Uh, Swiper is the tool I use the least. And this is the, re the reason for this is because uh, I have um, effectively hacked iSearch to do the killer feature of um, Swiper, which is to search by regular expressions. For example, using iSearch, I can do use Swiper and you can see what it is matching. This is great. I have a previous video on this. Uh, but you can also check my .emacs, of course. Uh, but the thing, the, the reason that I am using um, iSearch is because, let's say, for example, I want to move from here to this comma over there. You just search and you go there right away. It's uh, much faster. Whereas Swiper, I prefer to have Swiper for some more complicated command, especially when I don't know where it is in the buffer, up and down the buffer, and when there may be many of these matches, and I need to see also the line and things of that nature. So Swiper still has a role, but I don't use it for uh, quickly navigating to positions in the window. Uh, so that's it. Let's uh, move a bit further below. Uh, so a couple of extensions that I have. Ivy Rich is the tool that produces this extra information over here. Uh, it is uh, verbose. Uh, of course, my um, themes are configured to, to handle this um, like a champ, uh, no problem there. Uh, let's see some other interfaces that have Ivy Rich. Of course, this is also by Ivy Rich. Uh, MX is one of the cases where Ivy Rich is very useful because, uh, for example, you can see over here, you have the documentation, at least a snippet of it right away. So chances are you already know what you want to do with this. For example, uh, list faces display, and it is telling me list all faces, blah, blah, blah. Very useful indeed. Let's close this. Uh, what else do we have? And of course, uh, Ivy pause frame. Uh, this allows you to, this is actually a fantastic tool because it allows you to uh, reposition um, Ivy 
on a function by function basis. So it, what you see over here, what I have over here, the default, so this one over here, is to uh, place the window at the center of the frame. So as you see over here. But you can make exceptions for this. For example, when I run swiper, I want it to be placed uh, where it normally would appear. So I want it to be over there. That's great. And for some other commands like uh, variables or uh, functions, I want it to be over there because as I showed earlier, it is easier from there to do the control meta and N or P that I showed earlier. Uh, no need to go uh, through that right now. Oops, sorry. <laughs> I mistyped something again. I do these clumsy things from time to time. Uh, another thing that is great about Ivy Pause Frame is that you can uh, adjust the height of the windows on a per function basis again. again. So, for example, you can see Swiper, it is longer than, for example, uh, this one over here. You can see. So, this is 15 lines, the other, the default, I have it to 10. Of course, these numbers are arbitrary. I might increase them, I might uh, tweak them a bit. I don't know. Uh, the last thing to say, of course, with regard to post frame is that I have configured it in my themes to use a slightly different background than the main background so that you can really tell it apart because, of course, as I said, my themes are all about uh, usability. And my light theme does the same things as well. Uh, so this is it, uh, folks, with regard uh, to Ivy, some of the basic uh, features of it, uh, some of the things you can do with it, and of course, Ivy is very extensible. There are lots of other packages that uh, leverage its uh, features. Search for, <laughs> you can do it, of course, with Ivy. Uh, I'm, there is a command, I think, package install. I'm not sure. Yeah, okay. This is the Ivy interface for installing packages, um, populated, of course, by Ivy Reach as well. So, for example, if you search for Ivy, you will see there are lots of things you can do with it. Uh, other stuff you might want to search for is council. Again, there are lots of things you can do with uh, council. Uh, so this is great, of course. Uh, I guess that covers it. Um, maybe I could do the very last thing. I will switch to my light theme just to show you the pause frame, uh, how it is. Uh, because it is uh, very different, it's very light. Please adapt your monitor accordingly. I'm giving you an extra second. Okay. Uh, okay, because I'm recording as well. So here we are. Let's uh, check the buffer list. Okay, you can see it, how it is. This is great. Of course, screen key has not inherited the colors. Uh, I would need to close it and open it again. But you get the idea. I have everything configured appropriately. So that's all for now, folks. I will link uh, to the relevant uh, information in case you want to copy anything. That's all for now. Thank you very much for your attention. Goodbye.